sit back, relax, and take in what this incredible planet has to offer. Hi, I'm Sophie Faulkner. Join me to experience the world's best holidays right here on Luxury Escapes. It's known as the city of sales and a true harbour city. It's one of the most desirable places in the world to live. Add to that great food and entertainment and you have the perfect place to holiday. Welcome to wonderful Auckland. With a treasure trove of things to see and do here, I've based myself at the ultra convenient and stylish Quarters Hotel. As well as being close to everything, it's got all the astute traveller could ask for. Big, comfortable suites with all the mod cons, bars, spas, and a great restaurant downstairs. I'm an avid foodie, and with the eight different styles of food here, at the aptly named Eight Interactive, I'm more than covered. That must be wonderful. You're originally from Germany, yes. and coming here to New Zealand and seeing the amazing produce and the amazing wines. I love the wine here, and there's a nice living and uh, working area. So that is definitely better as in Germany. <laughs> Now, out of all the eight stations, what is your favourite station? What do I need to try? Uh, my Indian, like the curries are amazing. I almost would say every station. <laughs> you can't I don't choose can say one. no. I don't. Can They're choose. like all your babies. You yes, can't choose. I don't you love choose. them all. Yes. <laughs> Maybe it's a desert, not so much, but I need to look after my figure. But no. <laughs> As well as delicious meals to delight the taste buds, Cordis runs a fabulous spa to delight your other senses. Schwan, meaning flowing water, is based upon revitalizing yourself through the calming effects of water. You walk in the entrance, you can actually hear the water coming up the stairs. You really feel it, you feel at peace, it's very harmonious. It's just beautiful, the treatment rooms. That's sort of a, a signature part of the experience when you arrive, the fact that you do hear the flowing water. So it's not about just coming in and having a massage. And we actually um, also provide our tribe bathing facilities as part of that whole experience before you even have your treatment. The tri bathing experience is made up of our snail shower, we have a sauna and steam room and also our ice experience which basically warms the body and prepares you for um, your massage or other spa treatment. Now what is your signature treatment here? So the most popular signature treatment of ours would be the Shuan Harmony Massage um, and that combines traditional Chinese medicine sort of techniques um, within the massage so our acupressure points, Swedish massage and also our own Shuan branded products. Sounds very hard to take. <laughs> well I might have a little bit of herbal tea right now Perfect. and get ready to get more zen into my bar. Thank you so much, Victoria. You're most welcome. Thank Enjoy. You. If you want to experience the world's best holidays, visit luxuryescapes.com for great deals to amazing places. When Matt and a couple of his mates took a trip to New York back in 2012 and observed some of the bar's techniques they were visiting, they realised those bars were doing something right. Six months later, Bedford was born. We would go into a bar and people would say, hey, have a seat and we'll bring you drinks. And for people in New Zealand, it's like amazing. The drinks just come to me, you know? <laughs> this area is very cool. I've been here before with a girlfriend who's from Auckland and she yeah. always likes to come here. Tell me about the surrounding restaurants and what kind of scene it is. Um, so this is part of Ponsby Central. And so they've just got really cool and eclectic little food offerings. There's a fresh produce market. There's a cafe across the road from us. There's a fortune teller that's just around the corner there. I've, I've actually been I've I believe. Uh, yeah, yeah, just some really good operators with some really cool food concepts, and, and we're just the neighbourhood bar. Your drinks look too good to drink. I mean, this is one of the most amazing looking cocktails I think I have ever seen. Tell me, people actually come here just to Instagram them, don't they? Because they look so good. They, yeah, they see it on our, in our social media feed, they see it from their friends, and they just walk up to the bar and say, I want this drink. And yeah, it's super popular. What's this one called? This is the Hawaiian Time. It's been on the list since we opened. 
Yeah. Really easy to drink. And this one? Um, this is the La Familia, or bar manager James. He's just won the Bacardi Legacy, so he's going to compete in Mexico with this drink. As I love the name La Familia. Yeah, it's all about family. Oh, here comes another wow, one. Wow, what's this? Oh, this is the steaming copper kettle. How fabulous. Enjoy. And you're not just known for cocktails, you're also known for something else here. Tell me about your food. Uh, meatballs, it's a, again a concept that we've seen in New York. And we went to this meatball restaurant and he said, I love meatballs, and I'm like, I love meatballs too. Who so. doesn't like meatballs? And yeah, it's been, it's been really good since we started. Coming up, I enjoy food, wine, and a bit of horseplay. What a show off! <laughs> favourites for Auckland's locals for a quick weekend visit is Wahiki Island. This beautiful place is only a short ferry trip on the mainland and offers travellers some stunning scenery and sensational food and wine experiences. Te Motu, one of the earliest winemakers to settle here, has been perfecting fabulous wines in Waiheke for over 30 years. My uncle, he had the idea and the dream of growing premium Bordeaux-style grapes and wines, so Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, Cabernet Franc. And my father, they say, was the, had the green fingers in the family, so he, he came on board. They all and, go working together, okay? Yeah, yeah, pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> pretty good. Maybe there's yeah, a, a good, bit more of a story behind that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably a few bumps over the years. So, yeah, you know, that's what you uh, expect, it's family, absolutely. family, normal family. Now, tell me about some of your wines that you have in front of us. Yeah, so we've got a bit of a range here. Our Timotu is our flagship, and that is always a Cabernet Sauvignon dominant blend. Spins, that's one of your best grapes? That's, that's our best grapes from the vineyard. Spends 24 months in oak and a further three to five years in bottle before release. Oh, sounds pretty good. What would that go well with? Yeah, lamb, beef. Yeah. Now, you also have a restaurant here as well, and I've heard yeah. it's won a hat. Yeah, first on Waikiki as well, which is a good um, achievement by the crew down there. And it's uh, not bad because the, the restaurant is my father's old tractor shed that he, oh, really? <laughs> he knocked into a restaurant, a bit of food to go with the wines. So uh, my uncle Mike, he, he usually tends to the, the herbs and, and tomatoes, has a tomato patch and his own chutney. Really? Uh, How lovely, all the mm, family coming together yeah, and doing something so wonderful with food and wine. It yeah. sounds like heaven. Well, cheers to that. Cheers. And thanks for having right, me. Thank you for coming. <laughs> More than welcome. As well as delicious wines, Waiheke is blessed with pristine countryside and the perfect way to embrace all its beauty is on horseback. Today Liz is taking me to the spectacular Te Matuku region and I'm riding the adorable moss. Liz, this is some of the most stunning scenery I think I've ever seen. The grass, the colour, the water, it's so blue. You must love doing this. It's an amazing privilege to be here on Timatuku. It's an absolutely beautiful place and every day I'm always in awe. I never get tired of it. It's fabulous and, and tell me, on your horse rides, what can people expect and how long does it go for? Okay, usually uh, a ride is one and a half hours. So we ride along into the water on a high tide and then we bring them up to these amazing 360 views. They are speechless, gobsmacked. And even locals who come here, who are often a tough crowd, they love it. They really? just, yeah, it amazes them. It's God's country, isn't it? Now these horses must be loving life. This is some of the greenest, luscious grass I think I've ever seen. They're pretty happy. I think they live in pony paradise. <laughs> well, I want to go to the water area. Can you take me down? Absolutely. Let's, Let's do go it. swimming. Okay. Well, I am on Moss on Timu Tuku Bay, and we're about to go in the water. And apparently, Moss loves it. He's a splasher. <laughs> When you return from Waiheke, one Auckland restaurant to get to is Clooney. It's immediate Tony and his team's passion for sustainability, presentation and taste are evident in every dish. 12 years? Yep. 
think we've uh, maintained a pretty high quality over that time. It's progressed substantially from when it first opened. It's, it's in a really exciting place. As we've got better, one thing I've realised is the more interactive we are with our customer, the more we share with them. The more benefit they seem to get out of it, the more benefit we get out of it too. It's like a magical story on every single plate. There's so much dining out there these days, you know, people can go anywhere. So you've got to try and take it to another level. And one thing that's always been very, very important to me is the experience. So we've been trying to better that experience. Part of that narrative is we share it with the customer. So for example, your lamb, it's... It smells so good. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, look, it's an amazing New Zealand story, this. It's called Timana Lamb. It's part of a 10-year breeding program where they've brought four breeds together to create one. So it stays and grazes for 11 months on the higher corso grasses, the tussocks and things like that. And then it comes down and spends one month solely on chicory. We double smoke it, but we smoke it with the hay and the tussock from those farms. So then what we do, we take the chicory and we turn that into an oil and we use that to take away some of the richness of the dish. So the, the, the lamb's kind of going full circle. You've really which, thought about it, haven't you? Yeah, it's, and that's, what's, that's the enjoyment that we're taking from our food these days. We're thinking so hard and with only going New Zealand ingredients, it makes you think that little bit more and you've got to maintain that creativity and this is the way that we're doing it. Coming up, I get into the swing of things. One. Two. <laughs> and make a splash in Topo. Born from a volcanic eruption, this picture book setting is blessed with a glistening lake surrounded by stunning mountains, a haven for hikers and water sports lovers. There is something beautiful to see at every turn. Welcome to gorgeous Topo. A three-hour drive south brings you to this spectacular region. I'm staying at the beautiful and history-laden Hilton. This gorgeous hotel has seen many fascinating transformations, but there was one burning question I had for Annika before I found out more. Toe poor, is that correct? You did really well, Sophie, That's a Maori honestly, pronunciation, isn't it? It's is the correct Maori pronunciation. When I came here, everybody said it's not taupo, it's taupo. Taupo. That's how you pronounce it. So you learn it. something new every day. You certainly do. And tell me about the history of the hotel a little bit. Oh, that's an interesting one because over the years, she, if you don't mind me calling her a she, I don't mind at all. <laughs> she, um, she's had many faces. She hasn't always been a hotel. She was the Terraces Hotel originally and then she became a post office um, and she was a seedy bar at one stage. Oh, it's quite a homely hotel for a Hilton, isn't it? It is. It's quite a unique feel, isn't it? The heritage wing of the property is nearly 130 years old. Wow. And then we've got the mountain wing, which is probably only about nine years old. So the two combined, it actually has a really nice feel. You've got the modern meat heritage. Well, thank you so much for your time. Cheers, Sophie. Oh, I won't you. hit the gym, but I will hit the red. Okay. Something else to love here is the food. And executive chef Adrian has taken his passion for cooking and combined it with all the wonderful local topo produce to create a unique and delicious menu. You know, our food is probably leaning a little bit more towards modern New Zealand, which I think is a lot of fun, um, fun for our diners. Adrian, this dish looks delicious, and you know your lamb. Talk me through it. Growing up on a sheep farm, I had to have lamb on my menu. Real part of the passion of my cooking is also French. I really connected with it. So this is like a French Provencal, or my play on French Provencal vegetables. So I've got an eggplant puree. Got some nice little tomatoes on there, a little bit of thyme on them. We've got some black garlic, which has been fermented and, and heavily smoked. That's the essence of a Provencal dish. This has got my twist on it. Judging from this, that just looks absolutely sensational. So I'm very excited to try, try your food tonight. We're excited to have you in as well. Oh, thank you so much. If you want to experience the world's best holidays, visit luxuryescapes.com for great deals to amazing places. I have to admit, golf is not one of my strong points. But when it comes with a helicopter transfer, it makes it impossible to resist. These areas look so untouched, don't they? Yep, well this is sort of a lot of native bush in around here. The wild deer and wild pigs just, you know, sitting in clearings in the, in the bush. And you'd pretty much say, you know, hundreds of years ago, most of New Zealand would have looked like this. 
So the lakes are cold air, a huge volcanic eruption in, uh, back in 1800 BC. So it's basically a crater you can see the sort of way it's formed on these cliffs here. Sort of runs down there. The deepest part of the lake's about 620 feet deep. Crystal clear, fresh water in the lake here. In the, in the height of summer, you know, there's hundreds of boats in here, water skiing, fishing. It's kind of the perfect place to visit if you like a little bit of luxury, but you also like a bit of outdoorsy action, right? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. All right, guys, we get through a landing approach, so we're going down by the golf club. Thanks, Ben. That was awesome. I loved it. My pleasure. No worries. The fabulous thing about the Kinloch Golf Course, aside from the spectacular views and accommodation here, is the two resident pros do not judge how well or poorly you play the game, which in my case is a very good thing. So tell me about this golf course. It opened in December 2007. So Jack actually came out um, first up to open the front nine that was completed. Say his last name. For Jack Nicholas. Jack okay. Nicholas. Sorry, the sorry. the greatest golfer of all time. The Mr. Golden Bear. Mr. Jack Nicholas. <laughs> they actually man-made every lump and bump and every sheep rub here is actually sculpted. They took aerial photographs of the hillsides and tried to kind of merge it in so that it looked like it had been here for a long period of time. So really complimented the environment. Absolutely. It is a demanding golf course. Uh, I, th I think nobody's ever really tamed it first time out. Do you so they always. It today? I think you've got a fair chance. Let's see what. Let's see what <laughs> we can do. Have you seen me play? I haven't yet. And it's just as well. His best mate Paul and the other pro here at Kinlop is the sucker for punishment, giving me a few tips. Keep your head nice and still. Mm -hmm. Keep your eyes on the object that you're trying to hit. See, okay. Very <laughs> very important. Okay. <laughs> okay. Without further ado, over to you. No pressure, no golf ball, just the tee in the ground, all right? Oh, gosh. It's like, no right. Allowed to laugh. Go for it. One, two. <laughs> Put that divot back. No one saw us. <laughs> I'm sorry about that was, your life. That was there in the first place. Concentrate, you can do this. So you don't move your head. Now try not to talk while you're doing this, okay? It's easier to swing a golf club when you're not talking. Go for it. <laughs> Thank I you. Miss the ball. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> Coming up, I take it fast and slow on Lake Topol. Visiting Topol would not be complete without getting onto its lake. This beautiful body of water is larger than Singapore and 26 rivers flow from it. The largest of those is the Waikato and near its mouth, it narrows to produce the mighty Hooker Falls, which pumps out an incredible 220,000 litres of water per second. As well as stunning to view, there's another way to experience its beauty. Hooker Falls Jet is a fun-fueled adrenaline ride that offers more twists and turns than a garden hose. You've got the Pavlova apparently in Australia that you uh, sort of started or, or invented. Mm -hmm. We've got the jet boat. It was uh, <laughs> invented back in 1953 by a fellow called Sir Bill Hamilton. Unique to New Zealand. How this one works, we have two intake grills at the back. Water is sucked up and it's pumped out through two nozzles at 800 litres per second. Now tell me about this behind us, because this is pretty specky, isn't it? Yeah, well, it's a hook of falls. Um, quite special, we're very lucky, we're the only jet boat uh, business to be allowed or got consent to come up here. It is New Zealand's most visited natural attraction and uh, it's Lake Topor's only outlet. An absolutely stunning scenery, would you live anywhere else in the world? No, no. <laughs> I came from a beautiful place, Queenstown, I thought that was the, the place to be but here is, it's amazing and it's, it's a nice quiet town, not too busy, a lot of activities. Um, pretty good nightlife. You wouldn't be out in the nightlife though, would you, Chopper? No. <laughs> Every now and again. That was a long pause. <laughs> as well as a full-on, there is also the laid-back here on Lake Topol. Simon Jolly and his family have been making people happy on these waters for almost 40 years. My, uh, my father had a, a passion for fishing and somehow managed to convince my mother into buying a charter boat and uh, 
the rest sort of happened from there. Yeah, what does a typical day look like out on one of your, your charters? Bit of a cruise, have a look at some scenery. Uh, we're going to try a spot of trout fishing and have some lunch and a couple of drinks. You know, life's tough. I don't think I can do that. That just sounds way too <laughs> difficult, especially the wine and the, and the eating and the fishing part. Yeah, well, New Zealand's a little bit unique. Um, in order to, to try trout, you have to catch it. So it's <laughs> totally illegal to sell. It's and it's illegal to have bait, isn't it? So you've got to have plastic. You're right. Um, any form of li bait, live or dead, is totally illegal. OK. Now you're going to show me how to do this? We will do. OK, we let's do. do it. Sounds good. I'm ready. And sure enough, after a few quick tips, I was on the trout. The trick is just to be nice and gentle with them. As soon as you want to whine hard and give them a big jerk, right. pop it off. Being very gentle. So have you caught a trout before? Never have caught a trout before. Oh, trout. My first ever. Oh, there, we go. Yeah, there he is. OK. It's coming. Ah! There we go. Fantastic. That's hey. amazing. We thank you so much. Nice little rainbow. That's an amazing experience. About two pound. That'll work for dinner. Along with the incredible natural wonders Lake Topor holds, there is a particularly beautiful man-made one as well. When Maori sculptor Matahi Brightwell couldn't find a tree to carve a tribute into for his grandmother, he decided on the side of a cliff in the lake. Matahi is directly descended from this guy. So uh, he's paying homage to his great-great-grandfather, 29 generations removed. Oh, how beautiful. That's yeah. really lovely. And how on earth did they carve it? They ended up with uh, bamboo scaffolding. They spent four summers doing it. I think they had a lot of fun. It was, uh, it was pretty controversial, what they were doing. Um, but these days, it's gone right back in a full circle and, and is now uh, regarded as one of the best contemporary pieces of modern Māori artwork. A lot of people that come here come out not to, yeah, to experience the lake, but it's pretty unique. You have to be on the water to see it. And it, it's, it's an image of, of not only Topol, but New Zealand that's been broadcast around the world. No matter if your pronunciation is Taupo or Topor, this spectacular region will leave you breathless. Next time, Shane walks with elephants and discovers the cultural side of stunning Sri Lanka. Thanks for watching. Please join me again to see more of the world's best holidays right here on Luxury Escapes.